welcome to worship this morning on Christmas Eve. One more sleep, and it's the big day itself. A few notices to bring to your attention. The majority are on the back, but I would uh, highlight the ones to the bottom. There's a service for the late Norman Lilly on Friday the 5th of January in the church at 12.30. And then (laughs) following the Wednesday, the 10th, for John Smith, who sadly passed on, at 1 p.m. again in the church, and for Ken Barclay, the Saturday after the 13th, at 11 a.m. in the church. So if you wish to attend those services, the dates and times are there for you. And I'm sure our thoughts and prayers are with all the families uh, at this time. We take a moment and we just quieten our thoughts in in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we come together to bring our excitement about Christmas, our expectations of Christmas, all together in this gathering of your family, we pray that you would whisper into our ears and our hearts the deep truth of what Christmas means, what you have accomplished for us, and what you will see through to It's full resolution. So take our words, take our songs, take our prayers, take our thinking, and make it all an offering to you, giving you the glory in all things, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our first hymn or carol. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old.
Last week I did indicate that next week's service is a songs of praise service. I've had no suggestions. So you're going to get Bethany's hit list. So that's up to you. If you want your hymn included, you need to let us know and we'll do our best to include it. If not, you get somebody else's favorite. We start our Advent journey for today. This is fourth Sunday of Advent, so we need to light four candles. So I need four volunteers, four little pips, Theo and Tilly, Johannes, Anna, you coming? That's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we've got everybody. Cool, up you come. We're going to need a chair. We're going to need a chair. Uh, right. For those who can't quite reach as tall as that. And we need to find a match. Right, get yourselves in order. Who's going first? Everybody. Is that? <laughs> Right, first one up then, up you jump, so you can reach, and let's see if we can get the matches to light. Right, one of the red ones please. Well done, quick change over, who's next? Ladies first, up you come. Can you get up? That's it. Can you grab that? And can you like that red one there? Touch it onto the black bit. Almost. Hey. Right, who's next? Let your sister go first. Come on, are you coming up? I might need to give you a help because it's round this corner. Mum are going to help. That's fine. Right. Mum's going to help you up. <laughs> that one. Yeah. She's taking a sprout very suddenly. There we go. Right, Johannes, you've got the difficult one. You've got, can you reach from the floor? Can you reach the one round the other side? Right, go for it. This one's going to be tricksy. Oh, that, let's get a bit of flame on that. Right, there you go. Actually, you know what? Let's cheat. <laughs> yep, almost. It's okay, we'll get that. Almost. Oh, almost, please, the light. There we go. I not look it, but it is actually lit. Right, blow that one out before it burns your fingers. There we go. Thank you very much. Well done. Good job. That's all our candles lit. It, it, honestly, it is lit. It's just not a flame. That will get there. So one more light to light, and we will light that tomorrow for those who are coming for the half past ten. Christmas Day service. Or you can come for the 6 o'clock Christingo service. Or the 11 o'clock watch night service. We're here all day. Right. Question. What present would you prefer? That one or that one? The big one. The big one? Big one? The great big one? Hmm. What if in the great big one was just foam? And a tiny little present. And what if in the little one there was something very expensive? Hmm. But we don't know, do we? Because we can't see into them. We get excited by the size of a present without really knowing what's in the present. Sorry, 
Sorry, director. You want me to reposition myself? Okay, I'll stand here, will I? Oh! A Christmas bonus. I'm picking up foliage. It's like that Tesco advert. Turning into a tree. But Christmas can be like that. We think of this small baby. And we think that he's very small. Special, yes, but very small. And we forget that that small baby helped make the universe. So this great big world in which we live and the even bigger universe that surrounds us is all contained in him. So actually the biggest present is in the smallest gift. The biggest present God could give us is himself. Hmm, so that gets us all a bit confused about present sizes, doesn't it? And we keep saying, it's not the size of the gift that matters. It's the intention of the giver or the heart that gives it. You go, aye, that's right. When you open their sixth pair of socks on Christmas Day, you go, great, more. But one thing we do need to remember this season is that the biggest heart of all is God's. And maybe we should just accept the gift, no matter how small it may appear. Because in Jesus, the whole universe is distilled and contained. And that's something to remember as we get excited for opening our presents tomorrow. Anybody opening them today? Some open, yeah, I know some different traditions will open on Christmas Eve. But uh, we are sticking with the old school way. We are Christmas Day. And, if, and the, the way my calendar's going, it'll be about lunchtime before we get there. But that's another matter. That's a good Santa's little elf, uh, a little helper outfit. We're going to sing again. Now, I put this on the list thinking, oh, everybody will know that. And then Roz goes, I don't, I've never played this one. I don't know this one. And the choir joined in, they backed her up. And they're going... This hymn is ancient. It's not quite as old as me, but it's, it's old enough. Born in the night to Mary's child. If you don't know, it's dead easy. By the second verse, you've got it. How many folk knew it? Many folk knew it? Well, at least one. Oh, well. Two. Right. You'll learn it for next year. It'll be fine. This year, I did plan out all the hymns, all the carols and hymns through the whole of Advent. We have not repeated one yet. That will change as of watch night and onwards. Bob is going to share with us our reading for this Christmas Eve morning.
This reading is more or less uh, the last page in the Bible. Jesus is coming. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. <clears throat> John, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and of all who keep the words of this book, worship God. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right, and let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Thanks be to God. We sing again in the bleak midwinter. There's a warning. This is the full five verse version. Verse three can be tricksy to fit in, so just be careful. In the bleak midwinter.
can see we've got a, an item that the choir has been practicing, and they've even allowed me to join with them, though I haven't been practicing. Uh, it's a version of Away in a Manger. And our final reflection before the big day, it might seem a little odd to take our reading from Revelation, but I ask you to bear with me. Advent comes round each year, and each year we bring out the boxes of decorations, whether they're in the loft or under the stairs or in a cupboard or wherever they are. The tree gets unpacked, unless you get a real one. The tree gets trimmed, decorations put up, and if you watch Scotland's whole Christmas Home of the Year, did anybody watch that last Monday? Yeah? Oh, they get trimmed with varying levels of enthusiasm, subtlety, and indeed quantity. You may even have a nativity set that you put out, the center of which is the baby in the crib. I've actually got a few nativity sets a very old plastic one which was mine from when I was Isaac's age. It's approaching antique status, I think. And a couple of more modern ones. That's not one of them. That's just a picture of one. Ones that we've picked up along the way over the years. We have some decorations that we've had since we were first married. And we look forward to putting them out each year and other ones that we pick up. 
And each time we delve into these boxes, and I'm sure many of you are the same, we dive into memories too. Like Dickens, the ghost of Christmas has passed, are always around in our present Christmas. Memories of happy times and sad times, of people who are with us still and people who have passed. And they sit and they embellish our homes. Then Twelfth Night comes along. All the boxes are pulled out yet again. The process is repeated this time in reverse, the lights, the tinsel, the baubles, the figures, whatever else is put away for another year. And I wonder if in this oft-repeated pattern, there's a tendency to pat God's story away too. The Jesus of our Advent never gets a chance to grow up. Oh, I know we engage with the man at Easter but we tend to package up God's work into these little neat, tidy clusters. And in our nativity, in our advent, God is always the babe in arms. And we extract these stories, we extract these elements into single, standalone points rather than remind ourselves that they sit firmly within this bigger story, this bigger narrative that starts in Genesis and doesn't end until Revelation. Christmas wasn't the end of something. It was just the start of something different. Our theme has been Advent Journeys this year. Yet the presumption is that the journey ends at Bethlehem. We've got there. That's it done. We've arrived. But the story goes beyond that. The journey never ends. For Mary and Joseph, there was the flight to Egypt, then the return home, then watching Jesus grow up and begin his ministry, then in the Garden of Gethsemane, the trial, the execution, the resurrection. But even then, the story has not ended. It is not done. There is one glorious moment still to come his return, the full consummation of God's salvation plan, when he is completely reunited with the whole of his creation. Evil and sin defeated absolutely, comprehensively, finally and eternally. All of creation restored to his glorious form and purpose. All the promises and the prophecies given their completion, completed fully as we reunite in God. Transient, fail human bodies traded for eternal ones. All of this set in motion from that first Christmas. So why a baby? I think in some ways to make God manageable for us. We can hold a baby. We may have had our fingers or a finger of our hand gripped by those tiny fingers, those little hands. We may have gazed into those eyes so new and drinking in the whole world around them. In Christ, the babe of Bethlehem is the creator God. As his parent held him, they held the maker of all things in their embrace. The fingers that gripped theirs formed the world, the stars, the planets, the ones we've seen and discovered and given names and numbers to, and all those beyond our gaze yet hidden from our sight. The eyes that they gazed into have seen eternity. The hands that brought him into the world knew that this was not the end of something, but the beginning. 
Those of us that have known the blessing of children know that for sure. It isn't done at the birth. The story goes on, and you never get rid of them, but that's something else. The next intervention in the world will not be the quiet, humble birth of a child, but the triumphant breaking through of a God king, a sovereign mounted on a war horse in victory and glory, where those still living join him in the air and combined with the the hosts that have gone before. In a moment, all things transformed completely. The first Christmas, he became us. Small, limited, frail, vulnerable, like us. But on a scale we can connect with and can relate to. On the return, we become like him. We are transformed into him. We become eternal, complete, and whole. And only then does the journey end. But even then it doesn't. For we have all eternity to worship and praise him. We have reached our ultimate destination, our full purpose to be united with the God who knows us and loves us completely. The nativity is the promise of future glory and fulfillment. This Christmas, I pray you have a wonderful time, whether it's with family or friends, or even if it's on your own. Maybe a time of rich blessing. And the assurance that God is with you. But later on as you began to pack this year's Christmas away. Don't pack Jesus away. Keep journeying with him. As we all press on to the great and glorious day. May our hearts cry, Maranatha, Lord, come. And someone asked me this really annoyingly awkward, earwormy question. What does Christmas mean to you? And my usual response is, and a lot of extra work, and a lot less sleep, and you just go from one thing to the next, and it's, it's full on. But what does it mean to me? It's to remind me of that great purpose. What God has begun in Christ, he will see through its to conclusion and his return. When he became like us, that we will become like him. That's what Christmas means for me. Can we take a moment in prayer? Let's pray. Father God, it's easy to pack away the great story of Christmas into boxes for another year. Lord, we pray that we retain Christ in our hearts and not to pack him away, not to move on to the next story, but to just journey with him in our lives. That as he grows in up, in us, so we grow in him to that great day when in the moment, in the blink of an eye, we are transformed from this frail flesh into eternal glory and you make us like you. So Lord, Maranatha, Lord, This is the one um, non carol hymn that we're having this season, but it sums up that expectation. Come thou long expected Jesus.
Mary Peaks. <laughs> Elizabeth's going to lead us in our prayers for others and for the world. Thank you. Let us pray. Loving Father, at this time of the year, as we look forward to celebrating the birth of your Son and singing the words the angels sh sang to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all men on whom his favour rests. Then we turn on the television and there's news of wars between Palestine and Israel, Ukraine and Russia, trouble in Sudan. There seems unrest everywhere. There is no celebration this year of Jesus' birth at Bethlehem. Dear Father, draw close to us today as we pray for peace in parts of the world torn apart by war and injustice. We pray for peace in the hearts of those who have it in their power to bring change and reconciliation. Lord, we pray for our church and for our families, especially those who find this time of year difficult perhaps struggling <clears throat> with rising costs, or they are vulnerable, or they're alone, or who mourn the death of a loved one. Father, let them know that they are not alone, that you are standing right beside them, whispering in their ear. And in these few moments of silence, we bring before you those who are near, nearest and dearest in our hearts. Lord, <clears throat> Lord, at this time of the year we become distracted with presents, decorating trees, cards, etc. In fact, everything that has nothing to do with the real reason for Christmas. Forgive us, Lord, for paying more attention to the frivolities that we see set that sound that surround us at Christmas, instead of celebrating the gift of your Son. Help us to find new ways of sharing our faith with a world so greatly in need of your message. And as we leave this place of worship today, fill us with your spirit, strengthen our trust in you today, this Christmas, over the coming year and always. Fill us, Lord, with your joy and thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. And we will close, Lord, with the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our loved ones. <coughs> Leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We close singing our final hymn, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe.
as we go from this place, take Christ with you. Give him as the free gift that he is to all who you meet. Bless them with his love and his compassion. Bless them with the very presence of God that you bring. And God will be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.